Hey folks, Rob here with another initial recce for you. I haven't done one of these in a while. This is a format where I go through analysis of a scenario and then I discuss some military train analysis factors, the Akoka factors, to uh, just help break down the scenario for you guys if you've never played this kind of thing. So hopefully you'll find it interesting. Uh, this time we're going to do La Franc Ferrer number uh, 228, Last Charge at Umbrega. Now, supposedly this is the last uh, charge of the French cavalry in the war. Um, this takes place after the uh, capitulation of the uh, the French, obviously in early 41, down in uh, Africa. So there's some elements of the French forces that decided they did not want to side with the Allies, and they ended up making their way to Egypt and joining up with the Brits. So this is a an attack where the uh, Italian cavalry are holding up in camps, and the uh, French cavalry come up, stumble across them, and uh, try and attack them. So this is going to be a cavalry on cavalry battle. Now the scenario itself was designed by Lionel Collin and uh, again available in LFT number 14 which came out in 2018. So I've already done a review of that or unboxing if you will and uh, so I encourage you to look for that and check it out. A really good magazine. It's a bit pricey to get my hands on it but it, uh, it was quite handy. I picked up that and LFT 15 with the new desert board so I figured you know why not get all in on the desert. So as I said, this scenario 228 sees elements of the French and the North African Spahi cavalry. So that's your native cavalry that were uh, um, enlisted into the militaries. Um, and they're skirmishing with groups of African Ascari cavalry, which again are indigenous peoples that were uh, enrolled in the Italian or Axis forces. And uh, they fought willingly. So this would be, as I said, the last cavalry charge, and the French are attacking the Italian-led Ascari. Um, historically, it was a uh, wipeout for the Italians. The French uh, almost hardly lost anything, very few casualties, and they drove the Ascaris away. So um, on a cell scenario archive, there's a record of uh, 10 to 4 uh, French wins. And I just posted another one there, so it's actually, I think the numbers have changed, might be a little bit closer, but um, the French have a slight edge in this one. Now, Italians are the scenario defender, as we said, setting up first, and the French can either set up on board, or they can enter on turns one or two. Again, the French move first, so... So the attacker objectives for this scenario are quite simple. There's four Italian camps marked with the V, and the French win immediately upon capturing three of them. So the minute he rolls a unit onto three of these um, uh, hexes, then he'll win the game automatically. Something I forgot in when we actually played our game the other day. And or they can also take two camps and amass twice as many CVP as the Italians. So uh, there's two ways for the French to win. Um, again, like I said, French versus Italian troops. We're going to get into the different troop types and see if they are, but before we do that, let's get into the SSRs. So we've got uh, five to worry about, or six I should say. Um, EC are very dry with no wind at start, which has absolutely no bearing on this because uh, the kindling is an A. There's no HE weapons, and the uh, French don't even have smoke grenades, so there's no chance of causing fire. Um, woods are all considered brush, so as you can see, this is the uh, an ETO board 62, but it's got the desert colors on there, much like the uh, scenario itself has in the uh, the picture. So, inferring from this picture, we decided that desert rules were in effect, so we played with that in mind as well. So again, um, these here very dry with no wind at start. All the woods have been turned into brush, and orchard and grain are in season, even though the date of the attack was January. Uh, February? Uh, January, 2nd January. And so, there's also all buildings are collapsed huts. So you can see these buildings right here. I got the collapsed hut uh, symbol on there, printed off, and this is what we played on. So collapsed huts are Chapter G rules. And in essence, it's it's not considered a building anymore because it's collapsed. It's more or less just a, another LOS hindrance besides all the other hindrances that you see on the board. So uh, Calvary is allowed to enter a collapsed hut, uh, hex, and um, it does cost two move to move into the hex. And um, 
yeah, I think that's it for uh, collapse sides. Um, so the Italian units come on in two groups or are placed on in two groups. We have these units here, which set up around here within two hexes. And then we have this group here, which sets up over the other three camps. Um, and you must have at least two squads per camp. Now, what sucks is that um, if you remember my caliber video, mounted troops uh, mounted troops are have half their firepower uh, unless you're charging, in which case it's full firepower and usually tripled when you're inside the uh, target hex. So one of the SSRs is that group one, anybody that's dismounted must take a PTC. Now you can see they've only got six morales for three squads and two sevens, which is still not a lot. It's a lot of chances. So what I ended up doing was um, dismounting two of my three, four, sixes. I figured it's still a chance of them making their PTC. And uh, if that was the case, then I would have had a better chance of slowing him down when he came. Uh, when it comes to the uh, main uh, main force over on the west side, you can have up to two squads hip. So I chose these two squads here with the LMG and the 9-1, and I placed them inside one of the camps. So uh, they didn't stay hip very long because I needed the firepower. The way that Dave came on, I just had to uh, uh, open up with it. So another thing to remember, uh, another SSR is the French are not free French, which means that the um, they use their own equipment, as well as the presence possibly of four through seven green squads if they manage to step down. So for a four five eight, if it fails the LR, it becomes a four five seven, and then the four five seven will become that uh, four three seven green squad. Um, the only other thing that applies from the French ruling would be ordnance, which they don't have none, so it doesn't apply. Uh, French squads also have no infantry, so if you look at the elite squads, they do have a one smoke exponent. They don't have smoke grenades for this uh, scenario. Now, another interesting SSR is number five. All units of both sides are fanatic while mounted and or bailing out. So while they have low morale in general, even the French have broken morale, uh, one lower. They are fanatic when it comes to bailing out should that happen. So um, it's a little nice little perk that both sides could be, if you're mounted, will be considered fanatic. And then finally, as we said, all brush is treat, uh, all woods is treated as brush, and brush has now become rally route terrain. So there's a place for them to hide, although this is desert. Um, no quarter is not going to be allowed and uh, you're probably going to see lots of prisoners if you decide to play this game yourself. So, however, you do have a place to route to and rally from, so you'll get the bonus for all that. All right, let's look at the French forces first. So, as we said, there's two groups. You have this group that sets up in the west on board or coming on one of these three hexes. And then you have the eastern group, which can come on much like a, a, a C. They can come on anywhere from U1, a wrap around to Z10, anywhere along there. So it's a lot of um, leeway for them to come on. So they don't obviously don't have to be placed until uh, the Italians are set up, which means that they'll have a very good idea where everything is. They obviously won't see the hip, but uh, it's much easier for them to react to the Italian setup. Uh, in this way because I have such a, a large um, series of hex that they can come through. So in the first group we have a 9-1, we have a hero, presumably uh, Mr. Bellerin, and then we have three and a half elite squads all mounted. So again um, you can either set up on or west of row B or you can come on adjacent to I-1 which is basically these three hexes. Um, the benefit to starting on board is if there are enemy units uh, in line of sight. Again, with all the hindrances, it could be tight, but as long as you need, get one unit to have line of sight, you can immediately declare a charge. Alternatively, you could enter from off board at a gallop, so you have your full 20 move. And then uh, once you get to a certain point, like for example, these three hexes here, you get to I3, you'll be able to see whatever's in the valley, and then you can declare your charge then. And because you have 20 move, you have plenty of move to... Uh, do what you have to do. So again, the French have some options. 
based on the Italian setup. If the Italians are all set up in the valley, you can come on at a gallop, or if they set up on top, you can start off with a turn one charge. Uh, for group two, um, again, they have that large area that they can come in on, and the um, they come on in turn two. So once this gets resolved, which um, it might slog it out for a turn or two, some French might um, even ignore this map and just come on the board and head due east. Uh, I think I, I saw one playthrough on Snary Archive that did just that. But uh, these guys all come on on turn two. So there's three, four, five, eight elites, three, four, five, seven first line, and a half squad first line as well. Not to mention two leaders and two LMGs, again, all mounted. Now, once more, because of this area that they come in, because of the proximity of the three camps, you have the option, real option, of not even coming in mounted. Uh, it might be better that way, just so that you can take advantage of the brush terrain to come in, rather than suffering the minus two for being cavalry. Um, you'll just get a lot of pluses for the line of sight hindrance. Um, that's going to stop most of the Italian fire. One thing to remember, again, like we already intimated there, um, the French squads all have a lowered morale broken. Now, uh, leaders accept that it's only for the squads, even the half squad. Now, the um, when you're on a mount, you, you're fanatic, so your morale will be increased by one. So it might be one reason why you want to come on, just to get the extra morale bonus. I don't think you really need it. You do have four five eights. And uh, it's more than acceptable to just walk on leading your horses, um, if you even bring them with you. Because you can always mount up, assuming you've uh, secured your victory conditions here, you can always mount up and proceed somewhere else if you so chose. But um, what Dave ended up doing was coming on dismounted and uh, leading their horses. So it proved to be a very effective tactic. Again, there's so much line of sight hindrance, which we're going to get to soon that uh, a lot of shots are going to be stopped. All right, so let's look at the Italians. What do we got? So we have uh, three three four sixes and two three four sevens setting up around this Western camp. Now they can set up within two hexes. And again, um, if you're mounted, you have to use half firepower for, for being mounted. So you have, I have a choice as an Italian player, I could keep a squad dismounted and then he has to take a PTC with a six morale, not great. Or, and if he's paying the course, then he's half firepower. Or I keep him mounted and um, use half firepower because he's mounted, which again, three, four, sixes, you're looking at the one table. And again, with all these LOS hindrances, it's it's, it's six of one, half dozen of the other kind of situation on what you want to do. Um, the second group, which sets up in the other three camps, consists of 10 squads, uh, 7 347s, 3 346s, all first line, as well as two leaders and three LMGs. So they do have a lot of firepower to augment their meager three firepower squads. But the problem is, again, is you don't know where the French are going to be coming on, and you've got three camps to protect, and you must have at least two squads in each camp. So that's at least six accounted for, which only gives you four squads to reinforce uh, the three camps. So um, do you uh, uh, even off the load as much as possible, or do you, you keep a strong point? I tried to keep a strong point, and that's where I failed to remember those victory conditions. Again, we're going to get into all that when we talk about what happened. Uh, the other thing about Italians is, again, much like the French, they have one lower morale in the back. So all these three, four, sixes, and sevens all have a lower morale in the back, and uh, that has to be accounted for. Again, it's best maybe to keep them mounted just because it gives them that extra plus one, and the 346 really needs all the help that it can get. Um, and then there is the, uh, the fact that uh, because we're in desert, no quarters in effect, uh, excuse me, there cannot be any no quarter, and the uh, Italians surrender quite easily. And once captured, they will not uh, try to escape. So um, once you start capturing prisoners in the desert, especially Italians, you're just racking up the victory points because even when your squad, your half squad guard breaks, they're just going to sit around idly and not do anything. They make no attempt to escape. It doesn't matter if you're a leader or conscripts. 
for the Italians. Um, again, much like with the French, they are also get the fanatic bonus if they're mounted. But uh, given the terrain, it's again, do you pay the half firepower for being mounted? It's unlikely that the Italians will get their own charge, although it's possible. Um, it's just not very likely that the Italians are going to be doing a counter charge unless the, the French plan goes horribly awry. All right, so with all that being said, let's look at the Akoka factors. Now, Akoka is an acronym. It stands for Observation Fields of Fire, Cover and Concealment, Obstacles, Key Terrain, and then Avenues of Approach. It's a five-step process to break up the battle space that the military uses to uh, to define the battle space so that the war gamers have an idea of uh, what they can expect under certain uh, situations. So the first factor we're going to deal with is Observation and Fields of Fire. Now, again, looking at the map, you can see all the pretty grain, you can see all the orchards, which prevent, obviously, uh, which are in season. So therefore, any elevation difference will be blocked, uh, which is the only real blockage that is available on this map is if you're looking from a uh, um, elevation difference, which is basically the valley. Aside from that, it's all hindrance. There's no terrain effect. Um, they're just merely hindrances. Even the collapsed huts, they only offer a, a plus one line of sight hindrance. Now, remember that if you have six or more hindrance hexes, you're effectively out of line of sight, which is your biggest defense, I suppose. Um, but there's so much in here that you have to be aware of. Uh, a lot of your lines of sight are going to be um, not clean. It's going to negate the minus two for the French cavalry if you're the Italians. And if you're the French and you dismount, uh, you'll have your own battles to bear on the plus side again because the uh, lower morale of the Italians are probably going to break a lot quicker. But you still have to hit them. And with all those pluses for line of sight, it gets harder and harder. Um, with cavalry, you also don't suffer the uh, moving in open or non-assault move. You just always, with the minus two, it's like hazardous movement in that regard. So um, even with a... 2 hex line of sight hindrance, you're going to have zero modifier. And once more, we look at the Italians and three firepowers. Some force you to fire group just to get a six attack because you're going to be on the two table a lot. And again, when you have, you know, plus three for hindrance, minus two for horses, you're still on the two table with a plus one. And um, you're not even guaranteed to get a pinning task check. And even if you get a pinning, horses, or I should say, cavalry is immune to pinning. And heat of battle results, by the way. So um, you need to get an NMC or better. And it's very hard to do with two firepower. So you almost force the uh, group up. So if you're a French player, be aware of that and spread out. That way he'll be forced to take a lot of weaker shots at you. Or at least he can concentrate more firepower on less of your units. I would try and avoid stacking whenever possible as the French. Uh, also residual fire, because again of all the hindrances, you're not going to have very much, if any. Um, there's only a few open grounds, primarily along the roads, but uh, these uh, approaches to the three camps in the east, again, you have all this grain, you have all this brush, and unless they come traipsing down the road, which obviously a smart player would not do, um, you're not going to have much of the open ground, which means no residual fire. Now, when it comes to uh, fields of fire for the Italians, again, if you set up some guys up here um, dismounted, you have a, at least a chance of getting some full firepower attacks. Yes, you'll have a six or seven morale because you must take a PTC at the, at the beginning of the movement phase, by the way. So once the French player has set up, if I fail to mention it, the French player sets up first in the rally phase, and then prior to the movement phase is when you take your penny task check. So he doesn't know who's going to be pinning when he sets up his forces, which is, I guess, a, a compensation because, again, with three, three, four, sixes, if that's what you decide to set up here, um, you know, less than 50-50 chance of them making their PTC. And if they're pinned, that three, four, six firepower is already going to be halved. So, but it's still better than being mounted. When it comes to Italian setup in the east. Uh, again, I went with the two squads, the LMG and the uh, 9-1. I located him in V3 because I figured with that eight firepower, they could reach out and tag anything four hexes away, which kept this one in charge uh, in, in play. Uh, just it would have been long range for the squads for Y7, but they still would have had some good effectiveness with the Neg-1 leader. 
minus 2 calibre, you're looking at a minus 3, and you only have 3, maybe 4 line of sight hindrance. So it's a respectable uh, plus 1 on the A table, maybe the 6. So, um, or I should say 4, I guess, either 8 or 4, depending if it's long range or not. So uh, it's not, It was. I figured that was the best option. If, if I can cover these three camps with that central fire base, um, all the better. And that way I was able to split up the rest of my force appropriately. Uh, just remember, as an Italian, you, you do have hit for two squads, any single man counter and any support weapons that stack with you. But again, the question is, is where, where are you going to put them? Somewhere in here. So uh, they got to be within one hex of your camp. Uh, Y4 might not be a bad idea, or Y3. Um, this X here, this X here, maybe these two might uh, be acceptable to place them. Maybe this one. Uh, just so you have a good chance of blocking any entrance to this hex here. But again, he knows where you're going to set up, and the French will just compensate. If all your guys are down here, then he'll just come in from the top. So maybe that's where you set your guy. But again, it's it's you're gambling on, uh, well, you're not going to know where the French come on to, uh, to attack you. So any one of these five hexes will probably be feasible. I was probably in error by putting him in this one. It was just too far to the west. More centrally located might have been better, as it turned out. All right, so let's look at cover and concealment, the second of our five Alcoca factors. Now, again, there is no terrain effect modifiers in any of this terrain except blocked lines of sight from the orchard if you're looking at different height elevations. So the rest of it is all hindrance. Again, if you have six or more hindrance hexes, you cannot see, and um, that's about your really only saving grace. So when it comes to setting up, the uh, Italians will pretty well be concealed here in the east. Uh, the west, depending on where the British, or excuse me, the French come on, if he sets up on board, anything on the uh, upper level will, of course, be exposed. Anything in the valley will always be concealed. So... Um, Again, you have to decide, do you want to have units up top to slow them down, or do you just stay down the valley mounted and maybe leave this camp alone and come to... Uh, French units entering from off board will always come in concealed, if you so choose. Again, uh, you only got five turns of movement, and um, you want to get onto the camps quickly, so you're probably not going to take the time, luxury to be concealed, moving one, you know, two hexes per turn. You're going to be too far away, so with all this hindrance in the way, it's probably better just to uh, mosey on up and uh, take your chance with the plus one on the two table. Again, with our units to the west for Italians, you got to decide, do you stay mounted in the valley so you're concealed, aware that you're probably going to get charged by the French come or the, uh, the French coming in from the north. But if you stay mounted, you can always peel away. You won't be stuck in melee. You can always run. I mean, they're probably going to shoot you. But uh, you may have a couple of units that are make it to your eastern camps and help reinforce those numbers. This one is, um, it could quickly turn into a trap if you put too many resources trying to save this camp. So a French player, probably going to be aware of this. Um, try and set cutoffs, maybe somewhere in this area here. Let's use a different color. Let's use a blue one. Maybe in this area here, somewhere set up a cutoff, uh, send some units to deal with the uh, Italians, and then send a couple maybe in this direction to act as a cutoff that if they uh, force these guys to stay where they are, you pin them in place, and then your your force here, which is only three and a half squads, will do a not a bad job against the 346s and 347s, especially if they get a good charge in, maybe two. Um, but yeah, you want to have a cutoff so that you can prevent... Um, any reinforcements from coming in that way. Uh, looking at obstacles, it's quite easy. There aren't any. Um, the train costs one and a half for the grain, two for the brush. Orchards are one. Again, you're paying two to go uphill. Um, there's not a lot of obstacles to hinder movement. If you declare your gallop Remember that your horse will be CX'd and uh, you can't gallop um, in two turns, uh, back to back. 
so just be aware of that. But if you declare the gallop, you have 20 move. You know, it's only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, plus 3 to enter this hex J7, assuming there's an enemy there. So you're looking at, what, 10? Um, 10, 11 uh, movement factors just to get into J7. So you have plenty of move to accomplish your task with your force if you enter from off board. Or again, you could set up over here, and if there's Italian units here, just to clear your charge right off the bat. But there's generally speaking, there's no obstacles. Movement is quite easy. Um, it can add up if you're not careful. So again, you got to be wise when you gallop. And just bear in mind to, to go back with cover and concealment factor is that uh, you're always going to be at a minus two on the horse. So uh, try and keep several hexes of hindrance between you and whatever for shooting at you. All right, so that brings us to um, key or decisive terrain. Now, in this one here, there's only the four camps. Uh, something I failed to read about the rules was the Frenchmen automatically if they occupy three. So what I did is this one here uh, died when he attacked. Uh, this one here, I had two units, which I then sent up here to reinforce it, thinking I'm going to fight for this, unaware that I just handed him a free victory condition. Uh, with these losses and the two camps, he, he could have just stayed back and uh, shot away at me uh, because he probably would have won. Uh, again, you read your victory conditions really good. Make sure you understand what they are. So as we discussed, there's the four camps. You must have units within the vicinity of each one so that uh, whittles away the 10 squads in the east, for example. You have three camps. Do the math. And not a lot of protection. And the French only need to control two with twice as many CVP or automatically if they control three. So uh, again, through combination of poor rolling and, and some decisions uh, in the long run, it was the French that prevailed in our game that Dave and I played yesterday. Just remember, you win immediately upon taking three, uh, three camps as a French player. So as an Italian, you must defend all three in the East as best possible. If you can get your units from this location into there, you'll be better off, but then he's just going to follow up with some more cavalry. So you do have the numbers at the start. You have 15 to his 10, but his squads are better. They're probably going to be coming on at the charge. And when you have two squads and a hero charging you, they're going to be triple firepower in your own hex. So you're looking at the 20 table, maybe the 24 um, with a neg one. <laughs> so uh, it's not that great to be on the receiving end of a charge because it is very powerful. All right, lastly, in our five factors, we're going to talk about avenues of approach. So this is, uh, as it entails, the routes that an attacker might use to get to the objective. Now, um, as a French player, you're going to be aware of the setup. Obviously, you're going to be able to see. You can decide. Uh, the only decision you really have to decide is this one here because you're not going to know who pins. So if he has a squad here, here, and here, and they're dismounts, like I had, you don't know if they're going to be pinned until after you set up. So a 3-4-6 attack and adjacent 6 down 2 is still going to be quite lethal. Um, you just have to hope that they make their pinning task check. So you have to decide, do I put forces here, knowing that they're probably going to fail 50-50-ish, maybe less, or do I just send a couple units in here and the balance comes in this way? That's about the only decision you really have to make as a uh, French player. The rest of it is gauged on how his defenses are set up. Um, in my case, like I said, I had two squads here and here, and I moved them up. So he just sent in this, <laughs> this little pesky half squad, dismounted, moved in, and ended up claiming that one hex because I basically handed him that one on a plate. The rest of Dave's force came on from the uh, um, from the east. And again, leaving their mounts, they were just moving in here. And if you look, this is where I set up. Look, I mean, again, plus threes, plus fours. They're dismounted, so I don't have the minus two calorie uh, bonus. So I'm, I'm paying a, lot, a big penalty trying to shoot his units. So as an Italian player, um, you're forced to split up your force between those three. Um, 
he as a French player can choose which ones to focus on again based on your setup and the only uh, wrench in the works might be your hip squads now um, yeah, so you could maybe put one squad in V3, one in Z3, just keep him a hip until he enters that hex. But once he's in, he has so much firepower that uh, he's going to easily whittle away your defenses. But that's what I would say for Avenue's approach. The biggest decision for the French is, do you come on all units uh, galloping and then a charge? Or do you send some units this way while the balance comes in from the north? Either one is really, um, again, six of one half dozen the other because it's going to be determined on the Italian setup, what happens. And again, the three, four, six. So uh, I will refer you to my caliber video once more to see how effective they can be. Uh, when I did some play testing for that video, I used this map and this scenario. Um, one thing I failed to do was when I did my analysis was roll for pinning Tastic on units I had in these two locations. Uh, pin units, uh, pin 346 is almost useless. Um, and then, then when you FPF and you cower and all the rest of it, it just turns into a nightmare. So that's about it for the five Akoka factors. And, um, you already got the gist of what happened when we played through. So I recorded it on ASL Scenario Archive. So if you want to read about it there, it's basically just what I've covered. Um, Dave sent in a hero <laughs> and uh, one, one uh, squad. Rolled through my two pin 346s who were dismounted. Uh, or, yeah, actually, they were here. Uh, I had another uh, unit with a 346 mounted up here. And these two dudes were uh, hanging out in the valley. Um, this unit that Dave sent came this way here. I waited till he was an H7 that they were pinned, right? So it's a total of uh, three firepower double up to six. You think I could get, get, get that? No. Um, so Dave rolls in, does his 15, so on the 12th table, down one because he's a hero. Uh, I'd FPF this guy, so he's already broke. <laughs> then he turns and charges this unit here. Um, they were already pinned, no effect. And then he came and charged this unit here, pinned the 8 0, and uh, <laughs> broke the squad. Um, that's only one squad and a French leader, uh, French hero that did that. And then he brought on these guys from here as a stack. Uh, at a gallop, came to here, declared his charge, and he waltzed in. And uh, um, yeah, this this area here was deleted. That was on turn one. Uh, turn two, his reinforcements come on. He brought him on sideways from the east. Uh, I had had set up my hip guys here. And basically, like I was saying, I had three, four, sixes and a variety of different weapons and such in different locations. Because the uh, condition is you must have, uh, um, I think it was like this actually, you must have at least two squads inside each camp location. And uh, with this hip guys again here, I figured that was a good all around defense. And then what did I do in my turn one is I move these guys up here and uh, again vacate. Dave sees that, so his turn two comes <laughs> traipsing in and secures that by turn two. Uh, while the balance of his forces, as I said, came on this way. Um, this is pretty piss poor performance for my part. I managed to kill off two half squads um, in, the, in the process, and my last gasp. We forgot about the victory condition that um, these guys are all broken or running away. These guys are all captured, broken away. He had three camp objectives, which meant that he should have won immediately. But we forgot about that rule. Um, so we we're going for victory points, I think. I can't really remember. And um, at that point, these guys have been unhipped. So I figured, let's mount up. Or no, let's run. So I CX. I made it about here. 
and he shot me to pieces and broke my two squads, even though my, my leader lived. Which was my last gas I could have had it, because we were contesting this. And if I, or I should say, this one was his, but I thought if I could secure two, I could still win. Not aware of that again. He automatically won with three. So as I said, it's, it's it was a piss poor performance from the Italians. They have a hard job in this game uh, scenario. Um, yes, they're cavalry, but you have to decide again. Do you stay mounted at half firepower? Or do you dismount to get full firepower with, you know, your whopping three fire points? So, um, and you have charging four, five, eights coming at you with a, a neg leader. It's, uh, cavalry charges are nothing to sneeze at. Um, what is this? So that's 10 tripled. So on the 30 table, 30 table down one. That's pretty lethal. Um, and you've only got a three, four, seven that's halved firing back at you with the neg two. So... Yeah, it wasn't, uh, dice were not great. I made a lot of morale checks, which surprised me. I rolled a lot of threes, but it was for morale checks, not my attacks. So uh, it's enough ramble for me, I think, that this video's gone on long enough. So yeah, uh, F, uh, LFT 228 in um, magazine number 14. Good battle. It's a good scenario, but again, it's very tough for the Italians, I think, to pull off a victory, barring some good die rolls. And again, a, a piss poor tactics on my part. I just abandoned one of the uh, the four camps. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And we'll see you guys next video. Bye-bye.